We begin tonight with the men deported from Australia after their visas were revoked on character grounds. They were sent to the detention centre on Christmas Island, first of all, and then sent home. Home is a relative term for these men. The men deported from Christmas Island and still held there in some cases pending their deportation have almost all spent their adult lives in Australia. Some of them moved there as children. Life in New Zealand having suddenly been deposited here with no job, little money, a criminal history and no sense of connection to any community here is proving tough for many of them. One man told me today he had no work, he already owed money, his power had been cut off and he was stealing toilet paper from a local public toilet. Another man has spoken to us of feeling suicidal. Their stories are consistently pretty similar. Dislocation, inadequate support, joblessness, despite repeatedly applying for jobs and a desperately uncertain future. Having been discarded by Australia, New Zealand appears to be struggling to find a place for them. One man, Payne Clark, describes his life as a former detainee since he arrived in New Zealand in November. Pretty hard, trying to get a job, trying to move on with my life, you know. How many jobs have you applied for, roughly? I've applied for well over 50 jobs since I've been in Auckland. And what do people say to you when you apply for a job? They ring me or I send an email and I tell them my circumstances, I tell them I'm honest, you know, like um, I've been deported, I'm on parole and they just shut me down, they don't want to know about it. So the moment people understand that you're one of the 501s, one of the detainees back in New Zealand, you stop hearing from them? Yep, exactly. So, so what are you surviving on? I'm surviving on $80 a week to buy food. That's after your accommodation? After I pay $230 a week to stay in the room. $230 to stay in a room in a, in a boarding lodge or something? Yeah, in a lodge, yes. So you're getting $310 roughly in a sickness benefit, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So $230 goes for the room, $80 a week goes for everything else? Yeah. Yep. So how do you spend your days? What do you do? Me, I spend my days, well, I train a bit, or I go down to my local park or run. Most of the time I'm, I'm looking for a job. I, I do that first thing in the morning, look for jobs on the internet. Um, and then most of the time I just kick it at home and just relax and try and figure out what I'm going to do next. Your dad is dead. Where's your mum? My mother's still in Australia. Where's your children? My children are still in Australia. Do you feel like an Australian or a New Zealander? I feel more of an Australian than I do of a New Zealander. How many of the 501s who have been deported back to New Zealand are making a go of it that you're aware of? How many of them are making successful lives in New Zealand? I've only, I only know of one at the moment, who's a good friend of mine who's working for Amnesty International. Um, with the rest, the rest are in my position. We're all trying to, we're all trying to get a job, we're all trying to move on but it's, it's not that easy. Do you think that people will return to crime? Yeah, it's inevitable that people are going to turn to crime. You know, if we don't get the help. Who is helping you? Who do you hear from? Well, at the moment, only person that, that's helping me really or keeping in contact with me is my parole officer. Have you heard from PARS? The PARS, sort of... PARS, PARS helped us when we first got back. Yeah, they, they did a brilliant job, you know. They helped us with wins. They helped us get a birth certificate. So they helped get you onto a benefit? Yeah. And they helped, get, they helped you get the documentation to do that? Yeah. Have you heard from them subsequently? Um, no, they just put us in the house and I've tried to ring up for help for certain things and I, I don't get called back. But they did help us when we first arrived. And what's your parole officer doing? My parole officer, um, he's just ringing me. He's just asking me if I'm all right, if I'm fine, you know, and which is a good thing because that's support. Are you all right? At the moment, no, not really, because I suffer from a lot of mental issues, mental health problems, you know. So how tough is life for you in New Zealand? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough as because I don't know anything about New Zealand. I'm lost here. But every day I try and stay positive and try and move on. You know, I try to deal with it, but I can't. Look, like, I'm strong, but there's only so much my 
I can take as a man, I suppose. Is anyone helping you find a job? Um, I have been offered a job. Um, thanks to Marama Fox, yeah. She, she gave me one of her contacts and they're willing to start me on Monday. Doing so, what? Um, builder's labourer. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to get to that job. Where's that job? That job is in um, Manukau City. And you're in... I'm in Mount Roskill. Right. So how much money does it cost each way to get... Well, I worked it out yesterday when I went to the job interview. It's going to cost me about $22 a day to get to and from work, to work and back home. And at the moment you're surviving on $80 a week. $80 a week. Which is meant to cover everything. Which is meant to cover everything. So this week I've had to save my $80 and not buy food and use that for my to get to work next week. Would you have a job if it wasn't for Marama Fox? No, no I wouldn't. Okay. I, do, I don't like to ask for help, but it got to the point where I, I just messaged her one day and asked her for help. I said I really need a job, so yeah, she's helped me out big time. Do you feel the Australian government dumped you here and the New Zealand government doesn't want to know about you? Yeah, exactly right. Painter Clark, he's one of the detainees who was at Christmas Island deported back to New Zealand. We have spoken to a number over the past few weeks and those stories are remarkably similar. A group called People at Risk Solutions Incorporated, PARS, was given $100,000 by corrections to help people like Painter. Rachel Natai is the operations manager for PARS and she joins us now. Rachel, thank you for joining us. You heard Painter say early on in that interview that you were very helpful that you helped him with documentation, that you got him onto a benefit, that you looked after him when he first returned. But since then, there is an increasing sense that these men are adrift. Is that how you see it? Um, without having to focus on an individual, um, each individual case has, has presents its own problems. Um, our role and our the deportee grant is a rapid response navigation service, so we meet the initial rapid response need and then we can navigate to the experts. Um, because we're not experts in employment, we would navigate them to um, what it is that they need further assistance with. And we, and we consistently hear that in fact you were really helpful as a first point of contact when they returned. But after that, let's set aside the specific example of Painter and let's talk generally. After that, is enough happening to help these men even if only for the fact that if we don't help them, they are, as Painter said, inevitably going to return to crime? Yeah, it's, um, it is a hard question to answer, John, because we can, the, open, the communication can remain open as to where it is that they can be navigated to and assisted with it. Um, I, our organisation, as I say, is mostly navigational after the initial contact in regards to deportees. Um, I know that probation are also assisting in regards to um, hooking them with job clubs and trying to help them through job clubs. Work and income provide assistance as well um, if you're on the Job Seeker Support Program to um, seek assistance with employers. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's a hard question to answer, quite honestly, John, because it's about where it is that we can navigate. So we do navigate to different places. Uh, the communication can remain open. Um, and it's just about where we can get them in. Okay, two quick questions. Other than the navigation, which you, which you keep talking about, who else is working? So other than PARS, with your limited resources, who else is working with these men to try and make a material difference to get them back into New Zealand? Um, it would be uh, other community groups that they've been connected with. Um, off the top of my head, Salvation Army are providing assistance. Right. What well. government agencies are working with them? Government agencies are well, work and income, uh, probation, if they're on strength for them. Um, they have the opportunity to work with them. And then Revenue has been of assistance, and that's in regards to getting what they need in order to get the benefits. So, so there, Rachel, there is no one directly overseeing their reintegration, and in some cases their integration because these people left New Zealand as children. In other words, this is piecemeal, haphazard, being left to agencies like yours, and there is no one really overseeing this 
in a concerted and singular kind of way? I, I wouldn't agree with that. So I believe that the Department of Corrections are providing some sort of oversight and reintegration if they come back under um, the Act and they are under the, the wing. So I, I wouldn't totally agree that there is no one in the Government Department that's seen some sort of oversight. Um, um, and organisations that work with those government departments do their best too.